Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. Today I brought uh, John Popes on the call, who many of you will have worked with across the engagement piece, and we'll go through what we're going to cover today, which is about modifying the learning pathways. And this is one of the things that keeps coming up regularly. So I'm going to ask John to perhaps lay out the issue for us, and then we can uh, explore and do a live demonstration of what, what it actually means. Awesome, thanks, uh, David, uh, and welcome everybody. Um, so, uh, what, learning pathways, um, really good product from Microsoft, um, but I think it's fair to say um, that it's worth just covering off uh, what it is. So, the question is, the key question is, uh, we're asked is, we need training for our staff uh, using th Microsoft 365. So you've got lots of options to choose from. Um, you've got Microsoft online training coming from the uh, shop stores. Uh, whilst the pandemic was on, their staff were, were free. So we've offered those out. Um, you've got your delivery partners where you get your licenses from. So delivery partner for a bit of online training that they can provide. Um, of course, you've got YouTube. Um, however, what we are going to talk about is the learning pathways and, and what that does and how that can help so it's a key resource that you can add to your tenants from Microsoft. You can download it. Um, it contains the training links to guides, videos, a range of links to help your staff get up and running with 365. Um, the key, the really key points are um, it's a direct link to Microsoft. So as products are updated, um, you don't have to look at updating your uh, training, it's automatically done because it's this direct link to Microsoft resources. So it's always up to date. It's always got the latest information. So let's just talk about when you first activate the link, um, which I'm sure many of you, you have done, you get this standard page. Um, and this is one that uh, that I, I, I've i linked to uh, in a tenant. Um, you can bespoke it quite easily. Uh, and it's on on this on this page. Some of the links are way down the page. So what we wanted to talk about, um, and this has come up a couple of times with a couple of forces already. We just wanted to talk about how you can edit this page, um, and just point out to everybody that you're not losing content. All the content is there. Um, and David's going to probably going to go is going to go through and show how easy that is. So with some work, you can go from the, the previous offering to something like the, 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 the site that David has done with the enabling center. Uh, it's very easy to navigate, very intuitive for, for, for staff in force to find out information about uh, how to use Microsoft 365. And most most importantly, it gives you access to these tools, which uh, I'm just showing uh, on the uh, on the left hand side. So those are the key tools for using 365. So access to things like uh, Microsoft Teams, Sway, Yammer, Outlook, uh, OneDrive, to name but a few, uh, and they will give your staff that 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 information that they probably need to to get it working at virtually out of the box. So how do you do it? So what we're going to do is we're going to hopefully run you through that. Uh, uh, David refers to it as a demo gods um, and hopefully they'll be uh, they'll be looking down on us and, uh, and helping uh, helping this process. Um, and we will give you some input as to how you can change from the sort of standard offering to something that you can bespoke for your forces, uh, for your learning development departments, um, and and really putting something for your staff to use. So, uh, David, I think it's going to be over to you. Yes, fantastic. So, we've had we started off with this some time ago uh, in terms of the experience of it, and we wanted to try and understand what we got out of the box. And uh, you know, many forces have already been using the 
learning pathways and they've even you know spent a little bit of money having it deployed to their force and they get something quite which looks quite basic at times so i'll just pop the screen up and i'll show you what what you get now this is a customized version where we had it little icons built that pointed through and this is what the enabling center is and anybody who's got access to the enabling center can see this and when you look at the construction here this is just the sharepoint page and then this bit here is an element of the learning pathways and that was great uh, but then we wanted to have a look at it at what our staff experience was like. So we built this page here and it uh, was literally an afternoon not knowing what I was doing. And I built this site in an afternoon. And what we want to do is share the skills on how to be able to customize and build user journeys for your staff. So very simple out of the box. You can see I've split it up into the basics, getting started with this stuff. I've added in Yammer communities as well, so you can make it interactive. I've built a menu down the side that isn't just about the learning pathways. It actually links out to our external website as well. So we're able to point it straight out as videos and content like this webinar will be on and back into the wider PDS hub. So you can get back into the SharePoint site as well. So you can really integrate it into your offer and make this available for everybody in the organization. And you can build, break it all down. But what I thought I'd do is take it over to my demo section here and show you just how easy it is to start with the basics. And you can actually build learning pathways in about 30 seconds and you could be happy that you've done it. So what I've got here is a brand new page that we've built for learning pathways and I'm going to edit the page. And I've already popped in a couple of sections just for demo purposes uh, to make it easier in ways you become more and more familiar with um, SharePoint, you're able to do this. And what I'm going to do is add a web part. Now we've already activated and this is where your tech support are needed. The Microsoft administrator will need to make sure that th the learning pathways has been switched on. And because I've used it recently, it's in my top, but all you've got to do is type in for learning and it brings up the web part learning pathways. And if I drop that web part in there, home, click publish on the page, I have done it if I wanted to. And that's the out of the box solution. And every element of learning pathways is available here to navigate. So you click on this bit and it takes you to the learning pathways for those bit uh, about your first six, simple six steps to using 365. That's great. But how do you tell a user that they've got to click two, three clicks to get to that? that element. Um, similarly, you scroll down and you go on to everything on Word. Well, I'm not sure every user will need all these basics for this and they might be looking for something specific about using Word or Excel. How will they know to navigate down to that particular section? Click that link. So what I'll do is just show you how customizable it is and the impact it has. Now, one key important point, point here is this is included in your license. You've got it. It's free of charge and all the content that sits behind it is constantly updated by Microsoft to make sure it's right. So it works with the tools as they are evolving. So first of all, I'm in the learning pathways and you'll see this cog on the right. You'll only ever need to use this once. That takes you into the admin for learning pathways. And you can see here it's take me and it allows me as the as the page builder to work out which bits of functionality I want within the learning pathways to be available and you can switch off certain elements. So at the moment in Outlook, we've turned off the people and connections bit. OK, actually, I'm going to want that available. So I've turned it on and it's as easy as that. So that now is available to every time we do an instance in the tenant. I wanted that so you can turn on all the functionality you want to or turn off things that aren't being used at the moment. So if you're not using uh, lists, for instance, which is be a mistake, you really want to use lists, uh, you could take that out of the learning pathways at that level. But what you really want to do is start building pages and customizing them. So I'm going to go to the edit the web part here with that little icon on the top of the box there. And this is where all the power is unlocked on it. So I want to build a page for all my new starters who are pe or people who are just adopting 365 for the first time. So I'm going to call it first steps. In the title in there, you can see I'm basically customizing the web part here. I'm telling it to work on the web part, learning pathways, and it's asking me for a title. So I want first steps. And what I actually want is the content from that. So once I've done that, then it's only good at the moment that would just pretty much rename that section as first steps and show everything still. This is where the power is in the filter. 
So filter none means that everything is available and they have to navigate through it. But what I can actually do is split that into several categories. So you've got categories, first of all, which are about getting started, products, scenarios or none. So at the moment we're on none and everything's visible. If I click getting started, it's automatically found basically, I think of it as a playlist of content that you might want to do about first days and recommended content. That's great. OK, probably not what I want. Here's all the products and OK then. So here's oh, now it's only just showing all the products on that web part. Well, again, that's still quite high up. I can change the order of them by turning on custom sort. So if I want to get one note to be at the front, I can do that. But that, that's great. Scenarios is another one where you're talking about perhaps ways of working and we'll come back to that one in a second. But what we're really probably going to be looking at is, is get looking at subcategories. And that's where the power starts to really be unlocked. So I've now selected I want subcategory. And actually what I want is the first days as a web part. So now I've got a page here called first steps. And actually what I want them to read is these two articles here that are built in. I could actually just customize it right down to first days or anything I want. I want to perhaps they actually I want them to put think about teams first rather than 365 because that's probably the easiest space to order. I click apply to that. Click the publish button. I have built a page called first steps so the users can easily navigate to this land on here and click the button, watch a video and be taken through all the first steps and be recommended other content. Uh, so all that content is just sitting there ready to be used. And you know, I can easily put that into a menu just by adding it into the menu quite quickly. Really simple. OK, so that's great for just creating a first steps page. You can see how the users that have or we've already made it a little bit more tailored. But actually one of the key products that people use, let's say it's the analysts and they're all getting Excel and everybody's confused by those magical things called pivot tables. Now, apparently they're very powerful. I don't know how to use them, but I know they're important. So actually what I want to do is create a learning page on how to use pivot tables. So I'm going to go to subcategory and I'm going to actually now I'm going to go and do a playlist because I'm going to be really specific here and I'm going to go into Excel and I'm going to pick up on pivot tables and I want to how to create a pivot table first bit. So there is a whole section on how to create a pivot table. All the content straight there and then the next bit of that page actually I want to put another learning pathways section in and I'm going to again pick the, the button. It's, uh, this is where the demo gods are playing on me. They got them misbehaving. We just republish the page and publish again. Promise you, you can do as many web parts as you want to on the page. It just sometimes the, when you're demoing, it doesn't always work as well as you want it to. So David, it David, when you uh, when you're talking about playlists, what would you, how would you describe the playlist? Playlist is really down to a specific asset. So you can pick, you know, you want to pick a playlist around a subject of formatting on Excel. The uh, you could actually just get leave it at that and it will put that whole playlist around formatting. Or if you wanted to, you're constantly getting people who want to know about how to format a cell, you can make that a piece of content. Mm. So playlist is about bringing together a category and putting highlights of what's important there for you. Cool, thanks. Really simple way of doing it. So again, you, you can see you're building pages like that now. I've not made that a very pretty page, let's be honest. Let me show you what we actually did in, in, in the platform that we built on the on the 365. So if I just quickly run into SharePoint, uh, drop into using 365. So actually Word, PowerPoint and Excel, if you're building this, these are the three core tools of all Office points. So I built this in a very simple way. I'll show you the edit function here. All I've done is create a simple header page here with a bit of text in there, then a three section page here. Placeholder three sections and then three learning pathway elements very simply. And if you look at the settings for this learning pathway, I've done the column for words because I thought that would look really nice to have all the word stuff in one space there. And I'll follow Microsoft's advice about getting started and quick. That's easy. Jump onto the next web part where I forget I filtered that one just to be about Excel and that same sort category of Excel. Similarly, PowerPoint. All of a sudden, as a user, that's a lot easier to understand and navigate and be able to find to. But actually, what you might want to do is do it for teams as well. 
and th I put these together as a, a these are how you communicate. So these are the communication tools on one page. Uh, but then there's another one here on teams and channels because it can be really difficult to understand what's the difference between a team and a channel. So that's something I wanted to highlight in particular. So again, if I click on this and show you what we built here, click the edit button. I'm actually showing you our live page here, so that just gives you an idea. So actually what I've taken here is I just want the playlist are about collaborating in teams and channels. So I've been really specific about the bit of content I want them to watch replay and understand about that element of that section so you can see you can build a journey of all the way through and mix that up with your own local content as well so this is a sway that is available to you we'll drop the link into the chat in a second but i built a sway that we wanted people to use about how to use federation built a menu page popped it in there and i've not actually used learning pathways in there I haven't needed to because we've got the sway. If I wanted to see if there was something about that in, in learning pathways, I can edit the page. There's my sway sitting there. OK, then actually I'm going to add a new web part here. Go to learning. OK, then. so what have I got around collaborating? Because that's what I want to talk about. So I'll look at my playlist. OK, so let's have a look at this. So I want the content. I don't want left them there. I want something about subcategory and a subcategory about, oh, let's have a look, see what we've got, accessibility, collaboration, perfect. So I've now put that content straight into that page because it's associated with that. Click the apply button, publish the page. So now to complement the sway that we've written about Federation, here's a lovely video from Microsoft which takes you through how to use the tools themselves and how to do that element, work where you want, etc. So all this content, that would take weeks, hours, months, and thousands of pounds to create as user guides for our staff is all sitting there ready to use. The challenge is, how do you make it accessible to the staff? When if you go back to that original demo, that original bit, if you, all you do is activate learning pathways, great, but you might not get as much adoption and usage of it as, as, unless you start breaking it down by roles and specific areas. And again, you could put this into specific teams as well uh, to make your SharePoint page work for you uh, and work really well. John, what's the sort of issues that forces are, are coming up with uh, in relation to helping support adoption? You're on mute. One was, um was was the ability to do exactly what you've shown, which was really bespoke uh, that uh, initial offering, um, putting your force branding against it, um, and the concern that it actually appears quite complicated. But I think certainly from after the uh, couple of occasions that, that we've demonstrated it to forces, hence the this webinar. Um, it's become a lot easier and the understanding is there of how how simple it is to build this out. Um, but by using those those uh, those tools that you have available because you're not losing anything by building a new page, all the tools sit behind. Um, sorry, all the links are sitting there ready for you to bring them over as David's just just demonstrated um, and you can really look at uh, your own offerings within force and uh, and make it much more user friendly for, for your staff, much more inviting for them to, to navigate around what's available. Uh, and you know, it's only this week I've found about that, about the custom sort function. That is really powerful when you want to particularly highlight things and react to issues. So again, you just get it when you get into here, you suddenly realize the capability. Now you might say, why have you put everything together for, for the, all the office tools? Um, why not just do a page for Word? Well, why not? That's fine. If you're a department that does like the comms department might want to be doing doing lots of PowerPoint, you might want to do one just on presenting on Teams on PowerPoint. There'll be an element of learning pathways where you can say this is one of the skills that you need to do and here's all the learning pathways content to do it. So I've literally just can create a copy of a page I've already done. Again, this just shows how simple it is. So I'm going to put this page to be presenting Teams, OK, so that's a use case many of us will need to do. 
I'm going to get rid of this whole bit here with one at least get rid of that. I uh, don't want this bit either, so I'll just click that button there. Put one section in there. I'm going to put a web part in there. That's easy enough. The button comes up, there it goes. Learning. And the reason I, I know I could click fast and get you there. I know the settings are on, everything's on that I need to be on. One thing I will say that you might look for that's not always there is the Power Platform guidance that you have to go and run to Microsoft courses for. Uh, and there's plenty of things online to learn that. But unfortunately, there isn't anything really on there around uh, being able to use the Power Platform guide. So here we go. Let's have a look. Guide to uh, let's have a look in my list. Collaboration. Yeah, might not quite collaboration. It's probably more down here in Teams. There's Teams. There we go. Explore. Da, da, da. I'm sure it's in here. There's a good one for colleagues setting up a live event. So, you know, I wish I'd known about that when I first did my first live event. Um, they're all in here. Pick out this little section you want. Here we go. PowerPoint. Uh, da, 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 da. Presenting slideshows. There we go. There's the content. Really specific elements about it. And which bit do I want to do? Actually, I want to rehearse and present uh, PowerPoints. There you go. All the content sitting there with all the advice you could ever need, nice video to play, all the guides, and it recommends these other content to go to. So really simple way of doing that. I can see a Dave, question that's coming. Yeah, I was going to say, we just got a question. How do you get the left sidebar? Um, left, okay. How do you get to the left sidebar to appear in Learning Pathways? Is it not there as a standard? It isn't because I've not actually built that bit in Learning Pathways. That's built in SharePoint. So Learning Pathways, you're basically, if you build, just build the basic learning pathways by simply just building up a new page. So just do it like that, put a blank page in and just make that a learning pathways page by adding the web part. You're not actually using SharePoint particularly there. That is what you get. So you don't get any navigation. Oh, I need to give you a test. This is my little demo space where I can safely break things. So you can see here, I've created a, a page here for learning pathways. Actually, now I can click one button and add that to the navigation. So that's starting that left hand side and it's created the navigation for it. But I wanted to break that down as I have on those other pages. So I'll create a copy of this page. And I want that one to become the Word page. There we go. I edit the learning pathways bit and I tell it I just want the content on category, uh, it's subcategory. Sub Word, there's my Word page, apply that, publish the page, add the page to the navigation, there we go, or you can do the, you can, there's a number of ways to edit the navigation, you see I built the navigation there and I put that in there, to where the navigation appears is in your SharePoint settings for that page, so you can change the look of the page and again you can move your navigation to be horizontal across the top, vertical down the side, you can use your mega menus, your cascading menus, depending on how you want to do that. So you're actually using the basic SharePoint functionality to create pages that you can navigate to rather than using the learning pathways as the navigation aid, if that helps with that question. And that's 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 really a key point, isn't it, David? I think the, the ability for uh, the ease, the ease of standing up is through using that SharePoint, um, that SharePoint site plan. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you could start with no plan. I wouldn't recommend that. Have a little plan. What's your navigation going to look like? And again, if you want to edit the menu navigation, you can see you can edit it here. You can you can do some more audience targeting. But if I want to make that a sub page of something like that, make that sub link of there, move it up. You can create your navigation down the side or across the top really simply in the in the edit and navigation function. So again, you, it's up to you to build this as almost as a micro site within your SharePoint environment. As it's probably easier to build it as a microsite and give everybody access than to build it within your current SharePoint environment. It's a little bit easier to do it that way because it's then a self-contained place you're going to put it. And of course, the beauty of that then is you can actually then create a link on Teams to take people to it. So that's the other thing you can do as well. So if you went to your Teams channel, if I bring up the demo on that second, just pops on the screen. So again, into Teams. If we go into the PDF Hub channel. There's it gone. There we are. So I've actually created a navigation at the top of this channel. It's just, and again, I think the demo gods are going to let me down here. There we 
uh, yeah, it, it's it's just vanished temporarily. But I could actually create a little an extra icon in my Teams environment to take us to that SharePoint site in a really simple way. So you're making it really accessible. So I want it linked to a SharePoint. It's now going to have to. I'm not going to post into the team because again, this is a live environment. And I want it to go to a specific SharePoint site, and I can then go get the link of that SharePoint site. Uh, let me just get to a second. Apologies. Being led by your question, it's just confused my own navigation of it. Where has it gone? Well, you normally wouldn't have as many of these pages as I've got because obviously I've got the demo functionality. So I'll just get into this page here. Apologies. Mouse is playing up to date. There we go. Right, grab that link. Back to Teams. Drop that in there. Save. That tab has now been is just been set up. So now I've connected that how to learn Microsoft 365 to my team. And I can rename that tab. Quite easily. Drive traffic to it. OK, are there any more questions there, John? No, yes, um, we've been able to uh, policeify our learning pathway site and are in the process of developing it further. It was relatively easy editing the process by using current photos from our media department. The ability to narrow these topics down to assets is exactly what we've been looking for. So uh, thank you from John. Brilliant. Uh, and then next one is I'm struggling to put some quick links on a page under learning pathways content to some Microsoft website content. Could you talk through how to do this specifically? Happy to. Let me just go back to my demo space. So I'll just go, there we are. So again, because you're just building a, basically a SharePoint page, so I'll use this one here. You're building all your LMC SharePoint page and you want to put quick links to something else. Just build in that quick, add the actual menu section in quick links. And then you want to put a link into something Microsoft. Let's go Microsoft. Is. Learning. Please just find a let's see. And I'll find something that actually from Microsoft. Uh, here we go. So say I wanted to link to to this website here at Microsoft. Take that link there. Copy the link back to the uh, actual page where I'm putting that uh, pathways in. Where's it gone? There. So adding adding the link in from a link, paste into there. Add, and then this is where you can then customize the link itself by changing the icon, the image, what it's called, etc., to alt text for obviously for accessibility. Uh, so all those bits there and that creates that quick link in there. And obviously you can see, see all the iconography you've got built into the platform to make it work. And of course you can always see change the, the style of your web parts, your quick link buttons, put the um, tiles are quite good. If you get them right with the colour themes and the icons, that can be a really nice way of creating the buttons or buttons lists. Whatever you want, it's all in there. Just build it as a separate piece of the page under or around the web part for learning pathways. Similarly, if you wanted to add a Yammer community of self-help, just insert that next to it. Brilliant. Oh. We've run over a little bit because we did start a little bit late, so I'd want to thank you all for joining us today and hope that was useful. Please give us the feedback if it, if it is. If John, you can just uh, share the last couple of slides on the PowerPoint for me for a second. We have yep. got another event today, which is the Operation Hampshire workshop. Uh, if you haven't got details of that, please reach out to us quickly. We're happy to join you along on, onto that one and get you involved in it. Uh, next week, we are introducing the new business engagement team to you as the as we leave the uh, NEP. It is the last couple of weeks of the NEP now. Um, next slide, if you could, please, John. Uh, and next one, there we go. So again, you'll be getting to know a little bit more about the function of the new biz PDS business engagement team, how to get in touch with us uh, and what elements we're doing. And we are going to continue with the webinars, the workshops and the communications that work really well. And then the week after the 6th of April, we will be doing what we hope to have done today. But unfortunately, one thing or another stopped us doing that. Um, we are going to go through some of the learning we had our 
NEP board yesterday, which was very interesting. We actually closed down the programme officially, had the decision that at the end of March, the NEP becomes no more, uh, but there will be a legacy and we'll be sharing the reflections from the NEP. We are going to take a couple of weeks off for Easter from webinars, so hopefully you'll join us after that. And again, if we just pop the next slide on, there's a couple of guides there, a couple of URLs to some of the sways we've created, which help you move forward. The summit's coming up as well on the 12th and 13th of May, and we hope many of you will join us in Birmingham just outside the NEC and join us for the Police Digital Summit as well. So thanks for all for joining us and speak to you again soon.